Welcome back. This is our last lesson on percentage problems. Today we're going to talk about tax or discounts, other types of increases or decreases. We saved these problems for last not because they're really any harder than the ones that we did before, but because the problems are just a little bit more involved, we have to analyze the situation carefully and make sure we really understand what we're talking about. Part of the problem comes because people just casually use language associated with percentages and it's ambiguous. It's hard to tell exactly what somebody means and hopefully we can rectify that today as well. So grab your guided student notes and your calculator and let's get ready. I'm going to slide up here a little bit so we have some space. Oops, try that again. There we go. You'll recognize the word equation. It's the same word equation that we had before. An amount is always a certain percentage of the base. So we know that the base is the whole or the original or the reference quantity. Uh, the percent is fairly easy to identify. And then the amount is the part. When it comes to talking about sales tax, people just say things like tax. We say a percent tax, we say an amount of tax, but we pretty much just sort of shorten everything and just call it all tax. And that causes problems for us because we're not really being very specific about what we mean. So today we're going to be as specific as possible. When we talk about an amount of tax, this is money. This is the extra money. that you pay. The sales tax rate is a percentage. The base price, that's the list price, the price before tax, the thing you see on the price tag. And then, of course, we have a total price, which means that we need, need to add the base price. Whoops, that's not a B. Let's try that again. And the amount of tax together. OK. Other than that, it's not a whole lot different. The amount of tax is a percentage of the base price, right? You pay tax on whatever the price tag uh, says the price is supposed to be, and then the total that you actually pay is a little bit more than what the price tag says. Let's just try an example. We need to find the amount of tax and the total bill on an order of supplies costing $488.32. The tax rate is 5.4%. So the first thing you'll notice is that this problem asks two questions. So we need to make sure that we're reading the problem carefully and that our answer uh, completely answers the question that was asked. Let's just see what we can do here. The amount of tax. Do I know that? No, actually it says to find the amount of tax. So the amount of tax is unknown. I'm going to call that x. Is is still equals the percent. That's 5.4 percent. And you'll remember we need to write that as a decimal. Oops having a hard time talking and writing today. You know that you need to move the decimal point two spaces to the left. So 5.4% becomes 0 0.054. Of means to multiply. And the base, that would be the value of the supplies before tax, $488.32. Okay, so this problem is straight multiplication. Let's see what we get. 0 0.054 multiplied by 488 and 32 cents. And there we go. How much of this answer do we need? Well, this is an amount of tax, so this is money. This x is $26 and 37 cents. Now, of course, we're not done because the question asked us two things. This x was an amount of tax. That's here and that's there. 
So the $26.37 is the answer to the first part of the question, but it doesn't tell us the total bill. Of course, to get the total bill, we just have to take the base plus the tax amount and that gives us the total. So we want $488.32 plus the tax we paid, $26.37. Let's see, $488.32 plus $26.37. There we go, $514.69. That's our total bill. So it's real easy to get down to the bottom of a problem and find out what X is worth and feel like we're done. So you have to make sure that we go back and look at the question, make sure we've answered everything that we need to answer. Let's try another one. Flip the page. Here we have a soldering iron listed at $47.95. The cost, including tax, was $51.31. We need to find the amount of tax and the sales tax rate. The amount of tax is not specifically written down, but we can figure it out. We know that if we take the total, and subtract off the base price, we will end up with the amount of tax. In other words, we take the $51.31, subtract off the price on the price tag, $47.95. Let's see, 51.31 minus 47 0.95 and that gives us three dollars and 36 cents that was paid in tax. Alright so the amount of tax was three dollars and 36 cents and we can put that answer down here but we can also put that answer up here the amount of tax inside of our equation three dollars and 36 cents is a percent which we don't know of the base price. The base price is the price on the price tag. So here's where we have to be careful. The base price is not $51.31. Don't always choose the largest number. Really think about what the word base means and how you pay tax on the price tag value. The base price is $47.95. From here, solving the equation is easy you know that we just need to divide both sides of the equation by $47.95. And let's see what the calculator has to say. 3.36 oops, divided by 47.95. We need to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So we need to keep two decimal places for the conversion and one more space for the tenths. So in this case, x is 0 0.070. The sales tax rate for this transaction was 7%. And that's how it works. Let's work the other direction and save a little bit of money and talk about problems that use discounts. Just like before, we have an amount of discount. That's actual money deducted from the price. We have the discount rate, which is the percentage. We have the base price, which is the same as it was before, 
this is the list price. If you want, you can think of it as the original price. Whatever this is in your mind, make sure this is the one that is before the discount. And then of course we have the sale price. And to calculate the sale price, we just take the list price, or sorry, we'll call it the base, and subtract off the discount. So the amount of the discount is a percentage of the base. We still have that same basic word equation. Okay, so here we have an air conditioner. It was originally listed at $425. It's on sale for $365. What's the amount of the discount and what is the discount rate? Well, the amount of the discount we can find pretty quickly. That's just a subtraction. If we take 425, that would be the original price. Subtract off the sale price. That would give us $60. And that's the amount of the discount. So here we go. The amount of the discount, that's 60, is for equals some percentage, which we don't know, so we'll call it x, of, so we need to multiply, and the base price is the original price, which in this case is 425. And we should label this one up here. This is the base. All right, you know how to solve this. Take a second, pause the recording, find the discount rate on your own, and then come back when you're done. Okay, so hopefully you all divided both sides of this equation by 425. That gets x all by itself. And let's see, 60 divided by 425 is that. And they want us to keep the nearest whole percent. That means we need two decimal places, 0.14. So hopefully you found the discount rate to be 14% after you move that decimal point two spaces to the right. And the amount of the discount that's actual money saved was $60. There, see, not so bad. Let's see what's on the next page. A supply company offers a discount of 3% if the customer pays with cash. Joel paid $3,985.42 in cash for his purchase. I bet he felt really nervous carrying that kind of money around. Anyway, what is the actual value of the goods he purchased and how much money did he save by paying in cash? Alright, let's see what we have. Uh, the amount of the discount is not given. We know how much he paid, but that's not how much he saved. We have a percentage, right, so I don't know what that is. We have a percentage, we can turn that into a decimal without a problem. The base price, that's the original one, the price before the discount, and we don't have that either. And that's a problem. It's pretty hard to solve an equation when you're missing two pieces of the puzzle. So what do we need to do? I think we need to go back and reanalyze this a little bit. If you have a discount of 3%, then what percentage did you actually pay? Well, the whole thing is 100%. And if you discount it by 3%, you take away that 3%, and you actually pay 97% of the base price. Remember, percentages are always of something. And if we look right here, we have now created a new word equation.
I know what Joel paid. Joel paid $3,985.42. And that amount is 97% of the base price, which we needed to find out. And of course, to isolate x, we'll just divide both sides by 0 0.97. Let's see, $3,985.42 divided by 0.97 gives us, well, that's reasonable, a little bit more than what he paid. X is $4,108.42. And round to the nearest hundredth for pennies, 68 cents. That's the actual value of the purchase. How much money did he save? Well, we need to subtract. We know what the value was, and we know what he paid. So we take $4,108.68 and subtract off be three thousand nine hundred eighty five dollars whoops and forty two cents so Joel actually saved one hundred twenty three dollars and twenty six cents by paying for this purchase with cash okay so that's probably one of the trickier ones where we had too many things that we didn't know and we had to rewrite it we just use the other portion. Rather than describing the discount, we describe the percent that talked about how much he paid. Let's see, um, problems involving increases. Problems involving increases are just like problems that involve sales tax, right? Sales tax is an amount that you add on to something and an increase is an amount that you add on to something. These are just a little more general and don't have all of the store situations with them. So if you want the amount of the increase, we would take the new value and subtract off the original value. The percent increase, well, that's just the percent. And the base is the original, just like we talked about before. When things increase, they increase from a starting point. All right, so let's check out another example. We have a motor operating at six and a half amps. This motor can safely handle a 25% overload. Of course, not all the time, but you know, we get a few spikes sometimes. And we need to find the maximum safe amperage. Using our word equation, we might want to tweak this just a little bit to represent the situation and say something like the overload is 25% of the six and a half amps. Of course, the overload is what we want to know. And the rest of the equation pretty much writes itself. 25% is 0.25 and the six and a half amps slides right down. And then we just multiply 0.25 times six and a half, and we end up with 1.625. And of course, those are amps. The important thing here is that we pay attention to what the variable represents. Our overload was x. We're not done. The maximum safe amperage is not 1.625 amps. Right, it can already operate at six and a half, so the maximum's gotta be bigger than that. We, of course, need to take the overload and add it to the six and a half. So we have six and a half plus 1.625, and that's 8.125. So periodically, this motor can handle 8.125 
amps if it needs to. All right, on to the next page. We're almost done. Hopefully you're seeing and feeling that these problems are all the same because they are. We just have to read carefully. Percent problems involving decrease are just almost exactly like percent problems involving increase, except stuff goes down instead of going up. If you want to find the amount of the decrease, we take the original value. And subtract off the new value, because of course the new value is the smaller one. Things are decreasing. We have our percentage. And we have the base, which as always is the original value. So just like sales tax or discounts, we start with the price tag value and go up or down from there. Here we start with our original value, and since we're talking about decrease, we'll go down from that amount. Let's see. Um, yeah, the price of gas. That's important to everybody, especially if we're going out on calls to help people with their air conditioners. The price of gas decreased from $4.10 in May to $3.74 in September. By what percent did the price of gas decrease? The amount of the decrease is a percentage of the base. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the amount of the decrease, starting with $4.10, subtracting off $3.74. That's not a very good four. There we go. We find out that gas went down 36 cents in that time period. So here is the amount of the decrease. So it wasn't actually stated, but we could find it pretty quickly. 36 cents is some percentage of the base. Remember the base is the original, so that would be $4.10. All right, you know what? You should pause the recording and finish this one on your own. Come back when you are done. Okay, so hopefully I've caught up with you. You divided both sides by 4.1 and got this nice decimal here on your calculator. You'll take a look at the directions and they say we would like things to the nearest tenth of a percent, so we need to keep three decimal places. 0. 0.0 Eight, eight, And of course we move the decimal point two spaces to the right and find out that the price of gas decreased 8.8% in that time period. There. All right, so you should be feeling pretty good about these right now. As we come down here, we have one more example talking about motor slip. Motor slip is the difference between the motor's listed speed and its actual speed, and of course you know difference means that we need to do some subtracting. The motor says it's supposed to be operating at 1800 RPMs, but it doesn't really. It has a motor slip percentage of 3.8%. Your job is to find the motor's actual speed. So what we're going to do here is talk about the word equation, because this amount of slip, the amount of decrease, is a percentage of the listed speed. And that little sentence should be enough to get you where you need to go. Pause the recording, try this one all on your own from here, and come back when you are done. Okay, hopefully I've caught up with you a little bit and you decided that x was equal to 0 0.038. Remember to get that decimal moving two spaces and don't end up with 3.8. 0 0.038 times 1800 and the calculator says that that is 68.4. And those of course are RPMs. That is the amount of slip. So don't forget what we're talking about. 
it would be a very slow motor that was operating at 68.4 RPMs all, and that was it. So we need to find the motor's actual speed. So we'll start with the listed speed as 1800 RPM. Subtract off the motor slip. And hopefully you decided that this was 1,731.6. And you didn't lose your units and said RPM. And that's it. All right. Have a great day. Do some good work with your homework. And we'll meet you in the next lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.